there's obviously no sunlight on Europa. 100 kilometers of ice, that is pitch black. No sunlight. Yeah, there's a little bit of sunlight reaching the surface, but it's not going deep. If the bottom of the European Ocean has hydrothermal vents, then we're pretty much A-OK. -okay. Like if there's places, if there's molten rock in the core of Europa and that molten rock is leaking through, venting, uh, then just like we have in deep ocean vents on Earth where molten rock uh, leaks out into the ocean, we have entire communities of life forms totally sustaining without sunlight, no photosynthesis necessary, no sunlight needed. Uh, total uh, ecosystems with multiple different kinds of critters, all fascinating and interesting and also kind of gross. Uh, so if there are hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the European Ocean, then, uh, you know, we've, we're all set. We don't think the core of Europa is hot enough to be molten. Maybe, maybe not. So we don't know yet if there are hydrothermal vents. But even if there aren't, there are some intriguing uh, like pathways for life. We know that water can seep down into rocks, like deep into crevices, like deep at the bottom of the ocean. And at those high pressures, the water actually interacts with the rocks and can actually break apart some of the minerals and send some of those elements and chemicals back up into the water. This happens on Earth, totally legit thing. We've seen this happen. On the European Ocean, sure, it can happen. Why not? You got lots of water. You got lots of rock. Uh, presumably, you have lots of crevasses and fissures deep in the rock at the bottom of the European Ocean. So yeah, sure, this can happen. And so minerals and salts are making their way into that water. Now, Here's where that red stuff on the ice comes from. We actually not exactly sure what that red stuff is, uh, but through some analyses, through some uh, very, very careful studying, we've actually figured out, we've made a guess. Let's, let's put it that way. We've made a scientific guess based on reasonable amounts of data, blah, 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 that the red stuff on the surface of Europa is actually salts like salty salt, like salt you eat, salt, sodium chloride. And when you put salt in a really, really cold environment, like a vacuum, and bombard it with high energy particles that are streaming from the sun, uh, it actually turns red. So we've actually done this in labs. Like we put salt in a container, made it really cold, shot it with high energy light. Wow, red salt. Okay, so maybe, there's salts on the surface, like kind of sprinkled on the ice. Well, where'd those salts come from? They didn't come from the surface because it's just ice on the surface. The salts had to come from the bottom of the European Ocean. That's where all like the, the sodium and the chloride and magnesium, like all the stuff, all the rocks are at the bottom of the ocean. It's just ice up at the top. So this means these minerals, these salts, had to be leached out of the bottom, out of the rock, make their way up to the top of the European Ocean, reach that layer of ice, and then seep through the ice over the ages, reach the top of the ice, reach finally the surface where they get hit by uh, high energy particles and UV radiation, and they turn red. So this tells us two very, very important things. One, the bottom of the European Ocean is interacting with the rock underneath it. It's not just sitting on top of it. There are some chemical reactions happening. And it's telling us that there is mixing going on in the European Ocean. There are currents that take stuff from one place to another, left to right, top to bottom, that move. And here's a little bonus. You've got water ice on the surface, the surface of Europa. It's being hit with UV radiation. That UV radiation, as weak as it is, but we're talking over millions of years, as weak as it is, can break apart some of that ice, the water, disassociate the hydrogen and oxygen, and the oxygen can actually seep down through the ice and get into the water. 
So if you look at this European Ocean, it's possible, this is a little bit speculative, but it's possible, which makes it exciting, that you've got a body of water, you've got oxygen coming in from the top, you've got minerals and salts coming in from the bottom, and these are getting mixed together. Liquid water with oxygen, minerals, salts that mix together, uh, that looks a lot like an ocean on Earth. Oceans on Earth have oxygen. Oceans on Earth have salts and minerals, and there's a lot of mixing. There might be the right, the necessary chemical balance in chemical pathways for a life to arise. Because as far as we can tell, and again, this is a little bit speculative, we're not 100% sure, as far as we can tell, the European Ocean, even though it's locked underneath 100 kilometers of ice, may look a lot like our own ocean. And our own ocean hosts life of all sorts. Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more of me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing so that you can click the button and subscribe and it's super handy. Uh, this is so that you can get the latest updates of all my shows. I mean, that's basically how it works. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.